In this video we are using Substance 3D Designer to create a nice stone pavement. Let's go over the keynotes and parameters we'll use first. The Tile Random 2 node is an advanced node for placing tiles with very randomized shapes. Compared to Tile Generator it's much more irregular. Round Corner Radius adjusts the radius of the rounded corners. The Random Slant multiplier drives the random slanting. Rotation Random adjusts how much each shape can be randomly rotated. Flood Fill to Gradient gives you randomly oriented gradients for an existing pattern. It's very useful for random slopes and angles. It needs Flood Fill data as input, which is generated by a few nodes like Flood Fill and Tile Random 2. The Angle Variation parameter randomizes the angle of each tile individually. Flood Fill to Random Grayscale gives you luminance variation for an existing pattern. It's useful for height variation. It also needs Flood Fill data as input. The Quantize node reduces the precision of a gradient transition, introducing a stepped look. Steps defines the number of distinct steps for the input range. Let's build this basic stone ground setup together, which you can use as starting point for more complex setups. We start with the Tile Random 2 node and reduce the random size multiplier to 0.35 for less size variation. Let's increase the round corner radius to 0.5. Then we rise the scale multiplier to 1.15 and the random slant multiplier to 0.5 to get more scale and alignment randomness. We add a pearly noise with a scale of 16 and connect it as bevel distance map. Now we have control over the bevel randomness by tweaking the distance map multiplier to 0.1. For shape details we use a slope blur node with the pearly noise as slope input, increase the samples to 32 for smoother quality and change the mode to min to eat away parts of the shape. To lower the effect let's reduce the intensity to 0.15 and link it to a blend node. We connect the flood fill data output to a flood fill to random node for random stones height values and forward it to the foreground input of the blend node. Then we adjust the mode to multiply, lower the opacity to 0.6 and forward it to another blend node. By holding Alt and left click between connections we can reorganize the graph. To get random slopes we use flood fill data and the flood fill to gradient node. Let's adjust the angle variation to 1, duplicate the node with Ctrl D and tweak the random seed for variation. Then we increase the multiply by bounding box size to 0.2. Further we connect both to a blend node and change the mode to min darken for nice blending. As opacity input we use the random grayscale output to randomize the effect strength even more. Let's join it to the foreground of the other blend node, change the mode to multiply and lower the opacity to 0.65. Further we connect it to another blend node. Now we reorganize the graph again slightly. To get the smaller stone surface details we start with a clouds 2 node, connect it to a directional warp node and use the random grayscale output of the flood fill to random node as intensity input. This randomizes the effect for each stone. Now we use another interesting node called quantize to reduce the colors. A blur node with a small intensity of 0.8 helps to smooth the transitions a bit. To deform the result further we connect it to a slope blur node and use the small detailed clouds 2 as slope input. For better quality we increase the samples to 32, change the mode to min and reduce the intensity to 0.6. To blend it with the rest of the setup we connect it to the foreground of the blend node, switch the mode to multiply and lower the opacity to 0.8. For smaller deformation details we progress with a multi-directional warp node. Change the mode to min and push the intensity to 12. As intensity input we use the clouds 2 node. Let's link it to a height blend node. Now is a good moment to reorganize the setup the last time. For the base of a dirt ground we start with a moisture noise node. We duplicate it and increase the random seed value. Let's continue with a non-uniform directional warp node to deform the noise based on the other noise which we use as intensity and warp angle input. 
We switch the mode to average and increase the trail length to 0.4 for a smooth effect. Then let's connect it to the height top input, lower the height offset and increase the contrast. As last step, we rearrange the colors between 0 and 1 with an auto levels node. Here's our final base result of the setup we did before. You can save this setup and use it in another project or make a custom node out of it. You can further use it to generate a color map based on the height map by using the mask of the height blend node. If you want to learn more, you can download and open the graphs shown in the video. Thanks for watching and we would love to hear your thoughts, ideas and suggestions for future quick tips. So let us know them in the comments. See you in the next quick tip episode.